I figured out something. I figured out that the enemy was never a guy. That the enemy was never an anger problem. That all this victimizing of myself that had happened, it wasn't true. It wasn't that I have this sign on my head that says, if you're a jerk, date me. If you're studying to be a pastor and have <laughs> anger issues, date me. <laughs> what yeah. the heck? Yeah. You know, yeah. you start to wonder yeah. Yeah. after time three. You really do. And what I learned is that we all have issues. Okay, anger and self-hate make a really bad couple. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right? But I learned that the enemy this whole time was my own self-hate. Because I could have left at any time. First week of my marriage, I was covering up bruises from being strangled. And, uh, you know, I, I, you, don't, you don't think it's going to happen to you. And you don't know what to do when it does. And no church leaders will give you any advice. Because I tried. Because they don't know what to tell you. They're like, we can't tell you to leave, but we can't tell you to stay. And I'm just like, oh, please, God. And then, listen, I had never held a mic in my hand at this point in my life. Oh, my gosh, this is amazing. I never held a mic or a phone in my hand one time at this point in my life. You know, I'm 23, 24. And my pastor, my lead pastor, comes up to me and says, the worship leader's sick. We know you write songs. Your piano school is doing great. Lead worship for a while while we're looking for someone. And I'm like, no, 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 I don't sing, I don't sing, I don't sing. <laughs> and um, and uh, I mean, honestly, out of a heart of abuse comes, you know, a, or a heart that's being abused comes this worship. I believe that God heard my prayer. You know, take me away. Please, for Pete's sake, it was the first hit. Think about it. Take me away. I mean, I'm begging for God to hear me. I'm, I'm screaming louder. That voice got developed because I was on a church stage and I couldn't tell anybody the truth and I just screamed louder so God would hear me because I felt like he forgot me. You know, and that's where that voice came from. And I um, truly, I think he did. He picked up some pure worship in the situation that I didn't understand, kissed it, and uh, even gave it a Grammy nomination. Thanks for that. <laughs> Thanks for that. Totally unexpected. <laughs> and, um, you know, just if he loves a girl from Rockford, Illinois, who had never held a mic in her hand in an abusive marriage enough to give her a gift of singing, give her two Grammy nominations in order to get the confidence to like herself enough to get out of it, there is no measure that God will not do for the people that he loves, which is everybody, every single person watching this. There is not a measure that he will not go through to find you. And that thing that you feel is watching out for you is, it's him and he loves you. If anyone out there, if this has met you where you're at, or you relate in any way to this, just know that Jesus really does care. And especially you girls out there, it's time that we know that we're not afterthoughts to him. It took me 14 years to figure that out. I'm finally in the years of Joel 2, where it says that he will restore unto you the years that the locusts have eaten. I'm in those years now, and I'm telling you that you will be too. <laughs> as soon as you give this addiction to self-hate to him, you're going to be okay. Do what you need to do. Make the changes that you need to make, and be good to yourself, because you're worth it. And... Um, most of all, treat God like he's actually real. Start talking to him every day, and you're going to find that you have a best friend that you didn't know you had. My props to my precious sister, Sarah Kelly, for being so honest with us and, and sharing so much heartbreak, but at the same time, so much victory, what God has brought her through and rewarded her. What an amazing story. 
She was talking about earlier, the, when she was in high school, the features that other kids were making fun of her for was what made her famous. I mean, the girl did some modeling shoots and she said they used to make fun of her nose and her hair. I mean, come on, you know? That right there told me the great deception. You know, we live in a world where it's a fallen world. There's God's will, there's Satan trying to gun for you, and then there's just life. Life is unfair and life just happens. But we do have to be aware as Christians, as saints, who we really are to dispel those lies, to dispel the deception, and to own who we really are. Jesus Christ, who is God's perfect only Son, lived about 2,000 years ago. He came down, lived a perfect life, and was murdered. He was sacrificed, an innocent man, but he rose from the dead. His life story is documented in the Bible. And because of that miraculous life that he led, we have the opportunity to be joint heirs, sons and daughters of King Jesus. Isn't that awesome? One of my favorite verses is Colossians 2.10. And sometimes when I, I start digesting you know, the world's lies and I watch too much TV or whatever and I start feeling bad about my self-image, whatever it is, and those lies start eating away and I start feeling heavy and depressed. And I've even struggled with suicidal thoughts myself. Um, the Lord takes me back to that verse, Colossians 2.10. I have this written on a post-it and I put it on my mirror and I read it every single day. It says, we are complete in Him who is the head over every principality and power. We are complete in Him who is the head over every lie, every thought, every vain imagination. We are complete in Him. Woo! Because of Jesus' blood, we can dispel the lies and dispel the earth's kingdoms and everything that is a lie, that's deception. And we can live a victorious life filled with peace and living out who he created us to be. We love you guys and I thank you so much for watching. Today has been a pretty deep, it's been a powerful story. Again, my major thanks to my precious sister, Sarah Kelly, for being so transparent. Go visit us online if you have any other questions. If you're interested in knowing what it's like to be a Christian and get a Bible, start reading. And the book of John is an awesome one to start out with. Thank you guys so much for watching. We love you all. We will see you next time. And if God is for you, who can stand against you?